I'm delighted to report that I've uh, managed to make a convolutional neural network in Excel, and it's performing really outstandingly compared to the fully connected uh, ones that I've, I have been building. So I've run this for 100,000 iterations, which took a couple of hours, that's the slow part, and it learnt the various parameters in the model, which are, let me just close this down to try and explain what's going on. If we look at just the, the forward model, we've got four layers, which are um, layers one, two, three, and four, two convolutional and two um, uh, fully connected. And these are the parameters in the, the, these are blue numbers here. So if I zoom in on that, you can see a few numbers that are, are basically storing the information about which um, uh, number or digit the computer thinks it's being presented. So on the dash, if I run a test of a thousand, um, a thousand examples based on the parameters that are stored in the model after that run, you can see it's pretty accurate. I mean, we're getting 98%, actually goes to about 98.5 for a thousand um, tests. And this is testing those parameters. It's testing them against new sets of digits. These are the Jan LeCun MNIST uh, digits. He's got 60,000 training digits, balanced set, and 10,000 test digits of zero to nine. So there's 10 of each. If it was just random, you'd expect a 10% accuracy, but you know this is much better. And as the computer is presented with one of these numbers, 0 to 9, it's guessing what it is, 0 to 9, and its accuracy is very high. This is the full example of the mini-batch we're looking at, because this model looks at 10 digits at a time, which dramatically speeds the, the learning of the, of, the, um, of the neural network. It's also got some optimization code in which I'll show you later. If you're if you're interested, I would continue watching to the end. But if if not, if you're not an Excel and neural network nerd, then I certainly wouldn't watch much more than this. Um, but for the for the moment, what I'll do is I'll pause this and come back after 1,000 ha have been completed. So I think that's a fairly um, uh, thorough test. That's a thousand uh, examples, which is 10,000 letters, and we've miscategorized three in every 200. If we look at um, the charts uh, of this um, on a slightly better scale, set the axis to 2,000, flat as a pancake compared to the learning. But that's, I think, not the exciting bit. The really exciting bit is watching it learn. So if we, if we reset um, the, the, the counters and we initialize it so that the network, the parameters I showed you before, are completely dumb and then we learn from here. This is where it becomes, I think, very impressive because you have a spreadsheet with on-sheet calculations that is learning human handwriting to, um, uh, to an accuracy, a recognition accuracy, which is arguably close to um, human recognition accuracy, these letters being so dodgy that I think human accuracy is about 99%. But it's able to learn almost up to that level by looking at uh, cases and by having a simple set of maths laid out on the spreadsheet that absorb or recognize the patterns that a human puts into a six or a five. And the kind of archetype behind that that the human's trying to, to, to represent in his scruffy or her scruffy handwriting. So we're 56 percent at 160 um, iterations. You can see the confusion matrix starting to settle down. I'll pause now uh, and then come back and show you when it's reached the end of this uh, training cycle and see how good the results are after a uh, thousand iterations. So um, that's looking pretty good. It's got up to 84 percent. I've seen it reach 90 percent in in a thousand iterations on better initialization numbers, but it's the luck of the draw, really, because these are random initializations. Um, but this is a cumulative um, precision. So if I now use these parameters, reset the counters, and, and test it for a 1,000, you'll see that the accuracy of the test set is about 90%. So the instantaneous accuracy of, um, of this model, looking at uh, the handwritten digits, is 90% accurate. only gets 1 in 10 wrong after a couple of minutes of learning from the training set, s training set data. So pause for now, and then I'll, I'll take you through some of the back propagation and optimization code. Um, so again, I would switch off if this is not something that uh, is appealing to you. So um, this was the test, a um, thousand uh, checks, and we've got an average of 91.5%. Pretty impressive. Um, 
So what's happening in the back prop? Well, as we said, this was the forward uh, model, which just simply used parameters that were already saved in these four layers to um, identify characters or digits that were sent to it. But if we expand that out, we can see the back propagation, which um, the, the most interesting bits in a, a batch model are those which rely on the inputs from all of the uh, layers. So for instance, if we look at the derivative of uh, layer two's um, weight parameters, um, it looks like they're coming from uh, the same layers um, dz, um, the rate of change of dz, of z with respect to the cost function or with respect to the outputs of the previous layers, and a, a2, that's the pooled version of the output of lay two, layer two, so it's half the size. But it's doing this uh, deep into the workbook. So if you look at the formula here, um, it, it goes sheet one, two, three, four, five to drill in to get every single uh, example and then divides by the number of cases in the mini patch. So you get very rapid learning because you get the effects of um, all of the uh, different uh, numbers coming, coming through. Um, I was slowed by uh, several hours because I was trying to build this with a, a drilling formula that looks into the, the workbooks. But unfortunately, that doesn't work with arrays because the n function in Excel only converts to a number, not an array. So if somebody could give me tips on that, I would save a few hours in construction. So that's the back, or the key to the back prop, which is the derivative of, um, of the, uh, the weights uh, and other parts of the back prop. But there's more to this, which is the, the, um, uh, the optimization. And the optimization simply, uh, if I zoom down, you can get the grad layers. This is an um, exponentially weighted view of, of the, the gradient descent, which is really useful for straightening out uh, erratic gradient descent where the, where the d direction of the gradient is changing or the magnitude. It averages out over time and consequently gives you a much faster route to, to settle. Um, so there's various stages to that, but Adam comprises momentum and RMS prop. So that's it. That's the model um, uh, as it stands. It's, it's working pretty well. Uh, it learns very rapidly. Um, I've yet to do a very long run because I only built this uh, night ago. Uh, and so there are also a number of spanners in the works. I've had some difficulties flipping the um, uh, learnt parameters into 180 degree flips to, to get uh, the back prop to work, but I, it doesn't appear to be necessary. So actually quite a bit of extra wiring in this model, but it, it's still uh, very fast. I would be delighted to discuss this with people and talk about construction improvement um, or, or what can be done with this amazing tool, the convolutional neural network, um, which I think there's some value to be had in putting in Excel simply because it becomes very transparent to a spreadsheet jockey such as myself. So any comments, welcome. Thank you.